so I just saw another email, but uh, I don't see the one. You said the agenda was attached? Yep. Okay, that one I didn't get. I'm going to log completely out and start over again. But we could start on my phone while I'm doing yeah, let's this. Do that. All right. I think we're yeah. ready. We've got the lobbies open. All right. Good morning, Chair Postman, members, Garrett Vollendroff, staff, and guests. Thank you for your patience. The lobbies are open. The recording has begun. Thanks, Justin. Good morning, everybody. We'll convene the board caucus for March 26, 2024. Uh, first item up will be a legislative update with uh, Ledge Director Mark Webster. You want to? Oh, you're on here. Were you not oh. expecting that? No. Oh, oh. It's okay. <laughs> you have anything you want to share? <laughs> no. Okay. No, Will, Justin, anybody? Gretchen? No, okay. Moving on. Um, policy and rules team update and board meeting prep. Uh, I see most of the team on the agenda here. Cassidy, you want to take it from here? Yes. I'm um, sorry, I get my camera done. Good morning, uh, Good morning. Chair Postman. Board member Volendroff working on my background there. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, board member Garrett. Sorry, I can only see your the top of your head there a little bit. So, <laughs> um, so um, as you know, there were a lot of bills that were passed. I'm not going to get into that today. Um, all the rulemaking that will go with that. I think on the 24th that'll We'll, we'll go through all of that. So if, um, 24th or the May 10th, we're still trying to sort out strategy, implementation timelines and all of that. Um, so with regards to um, alcohol rulemaking, on the 24th, Daniel will be presenting um, a, a requesting board approval to file a 102 on the prohibited conduct rulemaking. And then um, we have quite a bit of cannabis rulemaking. Um, so today I'll be um, start hosting the first uh, of the, let me back up. We're hosting a series of rulemaking workshops to review draft rules that were modified to align with the changes that the THC bill made, um, made to statute. Each series will focus on a different topic or different rule sections and topics that were affected by the legislation. And then there, there will be two identical sessions for each series. So today we have the first series, um, and that is from three o'clock to four o'clock. Uh, people can find the um, invite online, but we're going to go over amendments to the uh, definition section and then also how this impacts medical cannabis enforcements. Um, and then we'll have another one on Thursday um, from one to two this week, um, and then all of the schedules on our website, but we'll finish up with all the series by the end of April. Uh, any questions about that? Okay. No. All right. Um, so social equity is on track. Uh, we're working to finalize some stakeholder questions that will be discussed in upcoming engagement sessions, tentatively uh, planned to be held in April through April and May. Um, with Sampling, the rules are being circulated internally, and we plan to make those publicly available in the next few weeks so we can hold st uh, stakeholder engagement on the draft rule language also in May. Um, a medical cannabis endorsements project that Daniel is working on, and that that is a different scope than the uh, how the THC bill affects medical cannabis endorsements, but we're going to clarify all of that this afternoon. Um, just because the rulemaking scopes are separate. <laughs> um, and then, so he'll be uh, pushing the 102 to the uh, 24th. He was originally planning on doing that on the 10th, but um, if we're not having a board meeting. That'll be pushed back. And then um, the 102 for minors on premises, which Denise is working on, will be uh, in June. And then the next steps for that will be holding stakeholder engagement. And then finally, <laughs> uh, for rulemaking, um, Daniel will be requesting board approval to file a 101 on um, 424, but we may push that back just because he has a lot that day. Um, and that's uh, regarding flexible payment terms for wholesale cannabis transactions. And then finally, um, we received a new petition received on, that was uh, received on Sunday, that's 324, related to banning disposable vape cartridges. Um, and any questions about that before I move on? 
The only thing I'd say about that is after you mentioned that one to me yesterday, I noticed a, a story or two um, in the cannabis press yesterday about, um, I'll have to find it again, but about uh, health impacts of vape uh, cartridges. It was pretty interesting given that petition. So uh, I'll try to find it and send it to, to you and Sarah. Great, thank you. Um, okay. Cassidy, I have a quick question. One thing that I would be interested in is the, you know, what's the volume of disposable vape uh, products versus non-disposable vape? So just, I, this was brought to my attention a while back and I've been doing some research on my own, but I'd be curious to know what's happening here in the state. Okay, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, so uh, along the lines of petitions today, Denise will be providing a preview of the petition response that she'll be presenting to the board <clears throat> tomorrow. Um, and this is uh, regards to some changes uh, being requested to WAC 314-55083, um, but the petitioner did not, did not request any specific changes. Um, and Denise will get into that in a second. And then also today for uh, tobacco rulemaking, Denise will be presenting a 103 requesting board approval to file permanent rules related to increasing penalties for selling tobacco and vapor products to people under 21. That's it. So now, All, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll pass it to Denise. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good morning. Um, yeah, good morning, Chair Postman and board members Garrett and Ballandroff. Uh, this morning, I'm going to preview the ACR 103 for rulemaking. I'll be asking for board approval tomorrow to implement and grow substitute Senate Bill 5365 passed in 2023 that increases penalties for licensed retailers for selling tobacco and vapor products to people under the age of 21. The board approved a CR 105 for expedited rulemaking to implement this 2023 law on January 17th of this year. As you may recall, we used expedited rulemaking because these changes are required by statute. We received no objections during the required 45 day um, period following publishing in the Washington State Register, which ends today, which ends today. If approved, the 103 will be filed immediately and the rule changes will become effective uh, Saturday, April 27th. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have about that. I have no questions. Thank you. Good one. Glad to see this one getting done. Thanks. And then uh, the second thing I wanted to update you this morning, um, it is about um, a petition. This I'm going to preview a rule petition. We'll, I'll be presenting for action at the board meeting tomorrow. As I will explain, the director's office is recommending denying this petition for rulemaking. As background, on February 22nd, LCB rural staff received a petition submitted by Justin Gua requesting that language in WAC 314-55083 be changed back to previous language. WAC 314-55083 is the security and traceability requirements for cannabis licensees. The most recent changes made to this section took effect in 2022 under expedited rulemaking to replace the term marijuana with cannabis throughout Chapter 31455 WAC. Prior to 2022, the last um, substantive amendments to this section took effect in 2018. The director's office will be recommending the petition be denied, mainly because the petition does not provide enough information about what change is being requested. At tomorrow's meeting, I'll provide the board additional background about communications between the petitioner and LCB staff, rule staff, and some history of changes to WAC 314-55083. Thank you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Mm, no questions, great. Okay, thank you. Is that it then, or did 
Daniel have one for tomorrow? I guess not. Then we'll see it. Okay. Um, do we just, oh, there she is. She switched devices. Okay, great. Okay. Um, moving on then. One, so I'm. Uh, we, let's go over some scheduling things because we all got uh, some conflicts coming up. Um, I'll be gone tomorrow, by the way. Um, and I know we do have that um, a petition in the, the Tobacco 103 tomorrow, but I, I would expect that neither would be controversial and won't require my vote on those um, uh, to get that done. Um, I'll be gone uh, uh, tomorrow. I'll be back in the office Monday, so I'll be here for all of next week's uh, lit review and, and caucus. Um, so, so one of you will have to chair tomorrow. And then I'll be gone um, the last week of May. And so um, would also need somebody on May 22nd. Um, is that right? When's Memorial Day? Well, I'll get back to you on that. I think that might be the next week that I'm going away is over Memorial Day weekend. Memorial is on the 27th, I think. You're oh, it is? Oh. Into Memorial Day, correct. Uh, yes. Which means I would not be here then on the 22nd. So um, those are my scheduled times away. And then... Um, Can I... Uh, so, Ollie, do you want to do tomorrow and I'll do this next one? Chair, acting chair? Okay. Great. Yes, Thanks. that'll work. Okay. And then it seems like we would not have a quorum for the um, April uh, 10th uh, scheduled meeting. Um, and so I, I think we should just uh, take that one off the calendar, obviously, because we can do it. You just can't do anything without the quorum. So um, uh, let's go ahead and take that one off schedule then for the, the 10th. Um, Also, I guess, is that um, the ninth too? Yeah, you'll both be um, conflicted on the ninth, so we should go ahead and cancel the caucus too. Yeah. No reason to do that, just since there's no board meeting that week. Um, so that was it from my end. At either uh, Jim or Ollie, other conflicts or, or concerns about upcoming stuff. Uh, we do have some dates. I know, uh, Jim, you both have, it looks like you might have uh, conferences or uh, travel uh, coming up. So um, we'll make sure that, and I think other than that, we'll have a, a quorum for all of our scheduled meetings for at least the next couple of months. We'll have to worry about the Part of summer when we get a little closer, but I think we might also find a, a problem in early July. Um, so we can take a look at that when when things firm up. Um, okay. Anything else uh, from members? Okay. Um, Dustin, anything else to add today? Nothing additional. Thank you, Chair. Great. Okay. Then uh, we will go ahead and adjourn the uh, caucus for March 26, 2024. There'll be a board meeting tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Um, and uh, have fun at that. We're, we're adjourned. Bye-bye. <laughs>